Hey, what's up, Spice Heads? Welcome back to another episode of On The Air, the show that's all about getting IT pros and tech vendors together to geek out over technology. As always, I'm your host, Justin Ong. We've got yet another great show for you guys. I'm really excited about this one. We've got a really great panel, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Uh, we're here today to talk all about ClearOS, which is an open source operating system specifically designed to help IT and make it simple and affordable and flexible, uh, and, so, and also find out what it is that they've been up to with HPE. So for more on this, we've got a great panel of experts for you guys that I can't wait for you guys to meet. So without further ado, let's go ahead and kick it off with a round of introductions. Batting first, uh, coming to us from the Miami area. Um, he is the owner of JTEC Enterprises, an MSP out of the Miami area, Mr. Joaquin Ochoa. Joaquin, what's going on? How are you guys doing today? Joaquin, uh, famed uh, podcast uh, celebrity that we just heard just now on the show. How's it going, man? Welcome um, to the show. It's actually going great. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to sit down with HP and Clear OS and talk about the wonderful products they got to offer. I got a bunch of great questions for them. Um, I'm actually from Miami. We, uh, we run a company called JTEC Enterprises. We've been in business for about four to five years. Um, we do primarily uh, aviation industry customers. Um, they outsource all their IT work to us. We basically handle everything from start to finish, from provisioning, cell phones, mobile devices, workstations, server, cloud services. So, Wonderful. Robust company. Well, glad to have you. Uh, uh, Joaquin, it's your first time visiting the Spiceworks office. You got to go out and get barbecue with our very own Lee Young last night. How was that experience? It was amazing. Uh, it's It's been like at Nirvana, here at Spiceworks <laughs> headquarters. It's been nothing but fun. I had a great time with Lee last night. We went to uh, Style Switch, a uh, barbecue place here in Austin. Amazing food, um, had a great time, geeked it out with uh, Lee, nothing but tech talk. All right, wonderful. Sounds like a <laughs> dream dinner for a lot of folks. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, thanks for joining us, Joaquin. Uh, our next panelist representing Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Mr. Shab Medina. Shab, what's going on? Welcome. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for having me on, um, uh, on your beautiful campus, beautiful <laughs> location. So my name is Shab Medina. I work for Hewlett Packard Enterprise in Houston. And I'm in their RAC, uh, in their uh, ProLiant organization. I uh, manage strategy and business operations. And so we do uh, the end-to-end the -end ProLiant, which includes the ProLiant, the world-leading ProLiant DL RAC servers and the ProLiant ML tower servers. Wonderful. Very cool. How long have you been working in the server space? So I have been with HP for over 20 years, and I'm in server space for about six to seven years. Okay. Well, well, thanks for joining us, Shab. Looking Thank forward you for to hearing from me. you. Uh, and last but not least, very special guest we have here today. He is the president and CEO of Clear Center, the makers of Clear OS. Uh, Mr. Mr. Michael Proper. Michael, how's it going today? <laughs> Not real last Life name. Good, Justin. <laughs> Mike, welcome. How's it going? It's uh, good to be here. Life can you tell us good. a little bit about yourself and, and your background? So myself, I've uh, really only worked in the information technology world and kind of come from a similar background as JJ here where I started at what, what was known as a managed service provider in 2000 um, and really saw a void in the industry around making technology simple, secure, and affordable. And so we set out on a destiny and uh, at least a, a focus back in 2009 to make that become a reality. And here we've got ClearOS and another product, ClearVM, that we'll be touching on, but mm -hmm. uh, f specifically focused on ClearOS today. So grateful to be here. Love Austin. It's a re I it's really a nice city. Not too hot for you. I haven't you. spent much time here, but it's good to be here. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks for joining us as well, Mike. And of course, what would on the air be without you guys, the viewers? So for more on that, we're going to kick it over to our favorite chat desk correspondent, Miss Chelsea. Chelsea, Hi. what's going on? Hello, hello, hello. Thank you, Justin. That's right. It's me, Chelsea, your chat desk host extraordinaire. Per the huge, you have questions, and we have answers. So be sure to get those questions into that Q&A widget. And if I ask your question on the air, you'll be in the running for some super cool swag from Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Intel. Do you all want to know what the swag is today? Yeah, yeah. OK, HPE is hooking you up with this really cool OGI backpack, and it's pretty heavy, and I think it's because there's stuff in it. So let's, let's see. There are tons Bag of zippers and goodies. compartments. What um, do we got? Hmm, well, what's in the box? Oh, very nice. Uh, it comes with a very chic notebook, complete with pen. Very nice. As well as, oh, there's one. It's another box. It's a water bottle thermos. Very snazzy. Coffee bottle in black. Yay. <laughs> All right, so you guys are getting hooked up with like the perfect IT Pro Go Bag. Um, tons of compartments, cool swag item. That's going to go out to um, a few lucky spice heads, like I said. And then our grand prize. 
which is going to go out to one very lucky attendee of today's show is an Oculus Rift! Woo! It makes reality so much better because it's virtual. <laughs> um, Who needs there. real reality when you can have virtual reality? I tried to um, work for Oculus Rift for a little bit, um, but as you can see, my marketing um, <laughs> tagline didn't make the cut, so now I'm here at Spiceworks, helping out with On The Air. Yeah. Um, okay, um, I'll, I'll stop rambling. I'm back from vacation trying to get back into work mode here. Um, so coming up later in the show, we're bringing back our Girl The Rep segment where our IT Pro guest panelist, Joaquin, is going to take over and ask our expert from HPE and uh, Clear Center some hard-hitting questions that you want answers to. And I think that's all the special little segments that we have, so I'm gonna throw it back to Justin so we can get this conversation going. All right, thanks Chelsea. And again, good luck to all y'all. Make sure to get those questions in. We'll be getting to your questions later on in the show. And good luck to y'all for winning those prizes. Sounds like a pretty good haul today, if I do say so myself. All right, guys, well, let's hear talk. All right, ClearOS, um, it's an open source operating system. Um, I think folks, there's a lot of folks that have heard of it in the community, a lot of folks that are relatively new to it. Who better than to give us an overview of what ClearOS is than the man himself? Uh, Mike, can you tell us, you know, kind of your overview of ClearOS, and in particular, um, how it differs from maybe some of the other Linux distros that folks may already be familiar yeah, with? Yeah, love to. So most Linux distributions actually have what's called a command line. It's a black interface, and you got to know commands to figure it out. So we, we, we came up with this analogy where there's mystery, there's margin. Mm. And we're really trying to vet it out, make it simple. It happened already in the IT industry with DOS and Windows or Mosaic and the web browser. So effectively, we're seeing it realized today with ClearOS as a web interface. So it, it actually layers on that black screen. So you've got a web interface that you can effectively manage what you would normally manage in that black screen. Um, and then it's got an intelligent marketplace attached to it. So you can pull down a lot of apps. Um, this app marketplace effectively does uh, over 110 different features or functions today. Um, and it's real similar to what the world has realized within the cell phone world. So you've got an open source operating system. You've got a lot of different apps that you can pull down from a marketplace. But nobody's really built it for the server world. And we've combined the server and the network and the gateway world into one system. Mm -hmm. So pretty disruptive, pretty unique, and we spent a, you know, decades building it, literally, um, and years developing relationships, literally. And so we're grateful to be able to bring it to the world and just start helping helping folks mm -hmm. to be aware of it more. Now you said you said you started Clear Center and started developing ClearOS specifically because you saw some some opportunities, some problems that needed to be solved. Mm -hmm. What would you say are kind of the biggest ones um, that, that you guys were hoping to attack? Uh, really, there's three different topics. One that's making technology really secure, and one that's making it really usable, which we just talked about, and one that's making it really affordable. In the IT world, it's really easy to get two of those, like mm -hmm. maybe affordable and secure, but it's not usable, or maybe usable and affordable, but it's not secure. So really making sure we nail all three of those, and that's what we've been focused on. Mm -hmm. Now, Shab, I um, want to get into more details about the partnership between Clear Center and HPE, but can you tell us about how you came to learn about ClearOS and Clear Center and what made HPE interested in working with them? So we were trying to solve the same problem. We were trying to go, at, uh, go develop cool products, great products for the SMB market. We've been in the SMB for a very long time, um, and we were seeing the same problems. We were saying, how do you make it easy? How do you make it uh, affordable? And how do you make it secure? And so we were looking at different partners and exactly what Michael said. It's easy to get two of those things right. It's hard to get all three right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I flew out, spent time with Michael, and, and when I heard his priorities, they were completely aligned with our priorities. So it seemed like, okay, this is a partnership that just absolutely needs to happen. And we had originally wanted to smart, uh, start really small and offer ClearOS on a, some select uh, uh, servers targeted at the SMB. But after we got working and we realized the potential, we decided to make it available across the entire ProLiant line. So you can get it on our SMB line, which is the microserver, the ML30, the D ML110, and the DL20, you can get it preloaded. It comes out of the factory like that. But on uh, the entire ProLiant line, which from the ML30 to the DL360 and the DL380, 
you can get it through a feature we call intelligent provisioning, which is you set it up, you push a button, and you can download a custom image and just get it run like that, mm -hmm. get it to run like that. And Joaquin, you know, Mike mentioned something interesting, which is the fact that ClearOS has uh, server networking and gateway all included in one. How does that impact the customers that you work with? Where do you see that fitting in with their needs? To me, I think it's it's going to totally change and revolutionize what 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 my basic uh, deployment model is. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I currently deploy between three to four different brands and products at the server level, the network level, and the security level. Uh, being able to have one product that we could push out and it encapsulates all these different services from security appliance, uh, the network layer, and the server layer. Being able to manage everything through one interface will create a lot of ease of use, uh, eliminate a lot of wasted time, and make life easier for a lot of technicians, mm -hmm. especially people in my field, which is the MSP. It, it makes it a lot, a lot easier to manage multiple clients, multiple servers, all from one location. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it'll definitely make, like you said, it's going to disturb the industry. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's going to basically revolutionize and change how people think about technology and how people change about deployment of their products. Now, um, you know, we talked on the podcast, or you and Chelsea talked on, you know, based out of Miami, predominantly your customers work in the aviation yes, space. Sir. How have you seen, you know, the, this concept of open source um, be adopted by, by these types of customers? At first, a lot of customers were hesitant about the open source. Uh, open source has a very bad stigma that it was made by hackers and people sitting out of the garage. People don't realize it's open source. It's, it's a community-based program made by several developers to try to resolve a problem rather than try to capitalize on a situation. Uh, so open source has taken a lot of f bigger footprint than it did back in the day. Uh, a lot of uh, enterprise environments are now realizing the cost savings of being able to deploy open source solutions and they've been able to, to capitalize on that situation and reduce their overheads and reduce their maintenance costs due to this solution itself. Um, as far as my customers and how I'm, I'm working with my customer now is with this, um, a lot of my customers are learning to adapt this. They're wor willing to work with this because they see that it's a reliable source. A lot of the big players are now adopting open source. So they see it as a viable solution to, to what they're doing right now to be able to co co cost save money, and better use their budget for more needed things. Mm -hmm. Now, Mike, um, you know, what can, uh, and, and Shab, what do you guys see, you know, uh, um, Joaquin's talking about, like, his enterprise customers adopting open source. What have you guys seen as far as the breakdown between enterprises and uh, smaller businesses as far as open source adoption? Exactly this, exactly what uh, uh, JJ's saying. So we saw enterprising, enterprises starting to adopt Linux some time back. Yep. Uh, they got past the reliability and the security concerns. SMBs, not so much, and I believe there were, that's because of a third option, which was simplicity and ease of use. And that simplicity and ease of use in Linux wasn't solved till ClearOS came out with their, uh, with their interface on top of the traditional command line interface. And th so that gives us that third leg in which to, uh, by building it into Proline, that gives us a third leg to take this uh, solution to SMBs, which gives them uh, basically a right out of the box solution that they can get working so people like JJ can focus on doing real work instead of setting up a server. Yeah. Open source is the future. It, it really is. Really is. Collaborating, yeah. you know, multiple teams globally working on problems and solutions. And we saw a pendulum swing back in 2015 where literally open source deployments versus closed source deployments leapfrogged one another. Really? Yeah. yeah so it, it, and then I would even say last year, especially with Microsoft and others getting on the bandwagon, it's, there's nothing that's going to stop it now. Mm -hmm. Open source is the future. Now, you mentioned uh, the App Store, and I feel like that's, that's always a concern, I think, for a lot of folks that are looking uh, to move from a paid solution to an open source is the application support. What can you tell us about you know, the, the state of the, the App Store for uh, ClearOS? So ClearOS's marketplace um, has both closed and open technologies, um, as well as you know services and apps. So it's really combining things that happen on premise with like services or apps, or even services or apps that are off premise. And so, um, almost any different vendor that wants to develop an app in the marketplace can sign up to do so. They can work walk through basically white papers to understand what to do, how to do it. And then there's a vetting process to get it in. It usually goes out to community first. 
once the community vets it and there's other things looked at from a security standpoint, then it'll go into a production base. So we think it's really important to have an operating system, especially at the network and server and gateway layer, mm -hmm. that is integrated with the app specifically from a security perspective. So there's a, there's a lot of scrutiny there. Right now there's about 110 apps in the ClearOS marketplace, uh, of which uh, 75 plus are actually fully free. We have a mantra where we do not bill for open source related technology. And uh, the only time we'll ever monetize it or make money with freemium models is if we've added value on it. So if we're delivering some type of service, so like uh, dynamic VPN where you link up two offices or maybe remote data backup or intrusion detection updates or content filter and pattern files. Those are things that we would charge for because we're adding real value and service providers welcome the ability to pay for them. But the net net is that value exchange has to be really valuable. So for instance, something that JJ would pay in the ClearOS marketplace, maybe a hundred bucks a year, we want to see him sell it for a thousand to three thousand a year. That's how the monetization has to work. And at the end of the day, the customer actually ends up paying less while JJ makes a grundle of money and there's a product that's actually scaling globally. So mm -hmm. today, uh, literally, ClearOS is over in over 400,000 deployments in over 150 countries and just continuing to deploy at about 150 to 180 new deployments every single day. Mm -hmm. Now, can you talk to us more about the security features and, and use cases for ClearOS? I mean, the, the fact that you've got gateway and networking included in your server, that's, that sets you guys already apart from some of the other server operating systems that folks are probably already using. But, you know, like JJ had mentioned, or, um, you know, folks have this conception that open source may be developed in a garage, uh, but that's clearly not the case. Um, so what can you tell us about how, how secure ClearOS yeah, is? Yeah, so, so there's a lot of apps. Our, our most popular apps are actually intrusion detection type apps. Um, the stuff that I see leapfrogging in the future will be things that do um, particularly things in the gateway. So maybe not the server layer or the network layer, but in the gateway layer where you're connecting that internet in, how do you bring in multiple internet connections? Or how do you make sure that folks that are actually pulling these connections in are using them intelligently? So particularly in the ClearOS marketplace, you've got an app called um, Gateway Management. And it effectively takes all the websites in the whole world, the billions of websites and IP addresses and ports, and locks them all down, and then uses machine learning to allow only what the IT admins want or the users want. And that's the key. We're putting the power into the user's hands. So if a user wants to go to a website that they haven't seen before, Sears.com. This technology will look at all the different links behind it Sears.com just so happens to have I was 20, like, does no one go 20, 20, 21 <laughs> links, right? I thought it was interesting. So 21 different sub URLs, and it will find those that really are, shouldn't be there, or maybe they're doing um, ads mm. or remote. Uh, there, there are certain things that uh, have you ever seen where you, you search for a pair of shoes and three days later? Yep. You see Miraculously, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's called remarketing. <laughs> and so it literally stops all of that stuff. But effectively, that's one app in hundreds of apps and more that will be coming. Um, but it, that particular app actually stops ransomware. Mm. Full on, stops it. So it's, uh, it's a very valuable way to think about connecting up and integrating technology really for the future. And I remember the first time we talked, uh, you had told me that um, when you started working on developing ClearOS, the sector that you were focused on was banking. So security was something that you were interested, it, it was a requirement from the grounds up? Yeah, from the ground up, from requirements from day one. Uh, whether it's banking or healthcare or anything in compliance, it's really important. There's a portion of ClearOS as well as ClearVM that has the ability to allow users to only do certain features and functions based upon who they are. Um, and then it also logs and audits what they've done. So hackers can't cover their trails like today. They really can if they want to. Yeah, and of course. Chad, go ahead. What were you going to say? And of course, secure software needs secure hardware. Mm -hmm. And uh, in uh, last month at Discover, we announced our new uh, generation of Proliance servers, which will be the industry's most secure servers, and uh, with some uh, with some uh, great new security features and complete uh, bottom to up. Uh, 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 bottom-to-up security, mm -hmm. and and they're coming out um, in a couple of months. Very cool. Looking forward to it. Yeah, Joaquin's really excited about it. <laughs> Nashab, um, you know, I want to ask more about the partnership between HPE and ClearCenter. Obviously, anyone can go out and buy 
uh, an HPE server and then go mm -hmm. out and download ClearOS and install it on it. What's what's new now for customers now that there is this partnership between ClearCenter and HPE? So that's a, that's a very good question. Yes, that's true. So anybody can download it, but you still need an engineer's time to figure it out, to load it, to make it work. What we wanted to do was integrate it, and through what uh, what I mentioned earlier, where on uh, our SMB products, these ClearOS is preloaded, and on uh, the entire uh, ProLine product line, it's downloadable through uh, intelligent provisioning. The images that you're getting is customized to the ProLine. It's integrated. So it's not a matter of spending an engineer's time downloading it and making it work. You know it works. Mm -hmm. For some platforms, it works as it comes out of the factory on others. It's a simple image download customized to that box. And, um, and so uh, it's a time saver no, for, hands down. for hands JJ. Down saver. And his, yeah. Hands down. Mm -hmm. And in particular, you know, one thing I found personally interesting is the microserver offering, uh, you know, specific to ClearOS. Can you yes. guys tell us a little more about that? Because I feel like that's something that, that definitely there's going to be a lot of folks interested in. Exactly. Um, the, I'm glad you brought that up because the microserver we launched it um, a few years ago, and uh, what we were thinking about was really this SMB customer, uh, one to 25 users, and we were envisioning how the microserver would be used, and we said, okay, it's probably going to sit on somebody's desk, okay, in plain sight, so it needs to be small, it needs to be quiet, and it needs to be good looking enough so that you're not embarrassed to put it there. <laughs> and so those were our, but there was a fourth, uh, there, was a f there was a fourth goal we had in mind, which was um, let's not spend time setting it up. It should be fully functional, but we couldn't do it um, until we partnered with ClearOS. So the microserver Gen 10 is now out, you can get it. And uh, it is, uh, it comes preloaded with ClearOS and it's ready to use right out of the box. I, I don't think the industry has seen any kind of disruption like this for a long time. No. Where you've got hardware, software, services, yeah. all integrated into one system at a price point of 349 bucks. How much? Sorry. Yeah, 349 bucks. <laughs> There's right. different ways to configure it, but the base package, memory, CPU, disk are all included. Literally, this is a turnkey solution at a disruptive price that has dual mix so you can do the network and gateway side of it it's got expansion capabilities whether you're talking PCIe slots or you're talking hard drives you can put up to 40 terabytes in this puppy mm -hmm. again price point is is I mean you should be able to buy these things right and charge buy it for 350 and sell it every single month for 350 with mm -hmm. your services yeah. I mean the the ability and your customers are paying half the price they currently are today yeah. yep. so your customers pay half the price you make a grundle of money yes That's sir. Like, <laughs> that's, that's like if you over a three year period, that's 36 times, 35 win -win. times. It's a win win situation. Oh, so. Joaquin, you've been spending some time um, testing ClearOS. You're, you're looking at deploying it to customers, and you've also spent the last two days with these guys. Yes. What, what's been your impressions? Like, um, I'm honestly, I'm very impressed with the way the software runs. I'm impressed with the services it offers, the management, the security, the stability has been unparalleled. And to me, the way that uh, technology is moving now, everything. For, for companies, enterprises, small business, medium-sized business, everything's going cloud-based. There's no more need to have local-based applications running on desktops, workstations, and stuff like that. So having a product like ClearOS where we could run, the, run all the services and everything off a centralized server and reduce our costs and it still be open source where you could accept packages from other platforms that are Linux-based, it's truly remarkable. And it's it's going to change the IT industry so much, and it's it's going to give us another bump into a cost savings future. All right, very cool. Well, guys, you guys have heard me yammer on enough for today. Uh, we're actually going to be switching gears to our next segment, where we turn control over of our show to our buddy Joaquin over here in a segment we like to call "Grill the Rep." <laughs> Joaquin, you've got about nine, <sighs> ten minutes. Perfect. Um, so one of the questions that I had was as far as the App Store, um, how does one become, uh, how does one post the software that they've built or created onto the App Store? 
So first you would sign up as a partner mm -hmm. and you would, you would basically fill out what's called an ISV form. So mm -hmm. it's an independent software vendor that you're signing up as. You'd read a white paper and you basically build your app based upon that white paper spec. You'd submit it and you'd basically go through a process of getting added to the community version. If there are paid sides of it, you would also go through a process of basically a revenue share. So just like in the Google Play Store or the Apple, you know, specifically their, what is it, App Store? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's a revenue share model, mm -hmm. and you basically participate in that. So if you deliver the app and the support service with it, 70%. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And if you deliver just the app, or if there's an app that we'll actually build and integrate it in, 30%. Mm -hmm. So it's a 70-30 split, and it's pretty clean and simple on what it's happens. Easy. Now, another question, as far as what you have on the App Store, can you install TARS, RPMs, different packages on a Linux-based clear OS system? Good question. So, yeah, you can go back to that old command line, right? I'm old school, so you yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> I prefer the CLI. You're right, you're right. So, But if you're comfortable in that, you can operate from that. And in certain apps or instances, you can also see it in the clear OS interface wow. or vice versa. If you do certain things in the clear OS interface, you can also see them in the in the command line interface. Now, our reality from a support standpoint is we only want to be supporting folks that are using this because the variables are limited and the support measurements are quantifiable. Um, but at the same time, we do not want to stop command line interface. If you guys want to run from there and do RPMs or whatever else, you can do it. Um, another hot topic, virtualization. How does clear OS deal and support VMs? Because that's beautiful topic and it's a hot topic now for a lot of companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You virtualize a lot? Yeah. So, so we absolutely think that virtualization containers are here to stay and ClearOS will actually have two strategies. Um, one that's here today which is called ClearVM which you would install before you would install ClearOS. So you'd install ClearVM on a bare metal server, any pro line. HP is the way to go. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> so it works on almost any x86 based system, but we really are focusing on specifically certifying on all HPEs. So yeah. for instance, this is certified on all Gen 9s, and the, the, as Gen 10s continue to roll out, you see that as well. But ClearVM gets installed right on the bare metal, and then you would install operating systems on top of that. Now ClearOS is just one of them, but you could do Windows, or Red Hat, or SUSE, or you know many others, Ubuntu, etc. And then on top of that, so that's one strategy, and then on top of that, you could once you get, let's say you just download ClearOS and install it, there will be an app in the marketplace that specifically does virtualization. It's a little different paradigm, but it's very disruptive. So everything we just talked about gets you virtualization from a web interface. Again, this is all a lot of years, m millions of dollars go into it. This is one that's fully patented as well, and there'll be some future things with open source and patents. It's gorgeous too. But from one web interface, you can see all your physical machines in any location, and then all their virtual machines, and then you can do certain things with the virtual machines. So for those tech heads, it's built on KVM. So any feature functions that you can do with KVM, it's going to come with that. So you can move them, you can back them up, you can snapshot them, all of that. All, you can expand memory, add more disks. All of that stuff is done from a virtualization stack. But the key is you can do it from a web interface, you can do it from any location with no VPNs and you can allow your admins. So your 12 engineers, you can say, you know what, these six engineers are managing these servers. They can only see them in this way and everything is audited. So full trail, audit trail. History. Full audit trail. Yep. Wow, that's amazing. Now, another question. Uh, I'm a big HP fan. Uh, all my customers and all my clients have HP servers in their locations. Uh, HP is an amazing product. Um, I'm a big fan of ILO from HP. Um, it has saved my butt several <laughs> times. Um, what, is your, what are your plans as far as integrating um, monitoring statistics and health readouts from the clear OS into the ILO? So if there's any problems, any kind of thing, we'll be able to log into the ILO to check statistics, logs, history, anything along those lines. So there's a really good fit with ILO and clear OS as well as clear VM. Mm -hmm. the, the reality is I can't talk about kind of how they're going to fit together. <laughs> but what I can say is it's gonna happen. The, way, the way to look at it is web services and API calls are already done and they're open. And so everything that we, we extract the, the operating system and pull it into a web interface with these web service calls. And so there's no reason why they can't play together. So just pay attention for, for some beautiful advancements there. Yeah, the, our first priority as we launched this was to make sure they work well together. 
Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing you asked me about, integration, right? What's the benefit of integration? Mm -hmm. uh, all the features of uh, the, the hardware working very well with all the features of the operating systems. You've got out-of-band management with ILO, and then you've got OS-level management with ClearOS. Truly amazing. Truly amazing. You got any more? Um, no, that was pretty much it. All I right. mean, you, you guys answered all the <laughs> hot topics and everything. Actually, yeah, I got one more. Um, <coughs> we were talking that ClearOS has been certified and approved up to Gen 9s. I have some existing customers that are running Gen 8, and I, I know after seeing this podcast, they're going to want to ask questions about getting the servers upgraded to this. Is that a possibility? So I, I would give you almost 100% guarantee, 99.8, that it's going to work just fine on Gen 8, Gen 7, Gen 6, I mean, it really works on some interesting gear, but, but the net net is we're certified only on Gen 9 today, all Gen 9s, okay. and working on Gen 10s as they continue to release. In fact, I was actually looking at the database, and he, uh, the database showed people using Gen 5 yeah. running. Oh, oh yeah. wow. <laughs> In fact, uh, I see them running on HP laptops, HP desktops. Ah, well, we've got some fun some really fun deployments where they do it on laptops because you got your UPS built into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they hook them up to these balloons that are actually satellite mm -hmm. for one internet leg. And there's some really interesting deployment archetypes. Oh, wow. but, yeah. Cool, guys. Well, uh, thanks, Joaquin, for taking Thank the you. show. Um, it's it. a great Drill the Rub segment. I understand chat is blowing up with questions, so we're going to cut over to Chelsea and find out what folks want to know. It sure is, Justin. We have a ton of questions coming through. Uh, Lee is in the studio today with us. I hear him like feverishly typing away, trying to keep up with it all. <laughs> Lee's in the zone. Yeah, he is in the <laughs> he zone. He looks like a man possessed right now. I wish I had a camera on him. <laughs> <laughs> Beads of sweat. We got uh, someone in the background uh, wiping it off his forehead for him. Um, yeah, so keep them coming. I'm going to get started, though. Our first question is from Anthony3125. Anthony wants to know, what benefits does ClearOS have in an SMB setting? So ClearOS was developed for SMB. So particularly, it was developed for 150 users or less per location. Now some big companies actually use, you know, maybe a distributed enterprise or a or bank or a Gap or, but these are all small shops that are actually less than 150 users per location. That's SMB to us from a standpoint of distributed enterprise. So as it, as it relates to SMB, it was built for SMB. It's targeted at SMB. I would add to that, right? I would say Linux, uh, enterprises have been benefiting from Linux for quite some time, and the only thing that was keeping uh, Linux from benefiting SMBs was because of usability. And Clear, Clear OS solves that uh, usability uh, problem, and integration with uh, ProLiant means a total package that's easy to use. All right, Chelsea, can we get some more questions, please? Oh, of course you can. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, I thought, it, ooh, I thought there was, was a like a, a slight <laughs> chill in the air. Um, yeah, you can definitely get some questions. Uh, since there's a thunder round, that means we're going to go fast. This one's from Beweber93. Does ClearOS work better on smaller units, or can it handle high-powered hardware as well? Both. Go for it. All right, okay. next question. <laughs> um, this one is from Verb8 Tim. Verb8 Tim wants to know, as someone coming from a Windows Server background, what hurdles are there to learning clear OS? None. <laughs> oh, come on. If you can read a web page, it's oh. the same network. Go ahead. I actually chime in. Uh, I, I come from a Windows Microsoft environment. I'm a Microsoft Channel Partner, Direct Access member, and MSDN member as well. Ooh. Uh, migrating from a Windows environment to a ClearOS environment, um, there's not any major hurdles to go over. As long as you understand the logic behind infrastructure, mm -hmm. server, and security, you are not going to experience any problems. This is a clear solution. It's simple and easy to use. You're not going to get complicated. You're not going to run into problems. You're not going to have to be troubleshooting stuff. In fact, we were talking to uh, one partner that saw this at Discover, two weeks later they had their first customer installation. One of the questions I asked them was, how did, did the users feel? I said, they didn't even know we did anything over the weekend. Mm. That same partner now has three deployments. That was, that was, <laughs> like, that was like on the fifth or sixth of last month that we met. So, wow, yeah. cool. Chelsea, next question. Okay, Double D wants to know, is Clear OS a replacement for a Windows AD domain controller? Great question. I think this, we need to give him a backpack. <laughs> so, because he's actually going to, there's a lot of logic behind that. So, 
ClearOS can actually be a primary domain controller, so it can replace Active Directory, or it can be a secondary domain controller, so it can actually hook in with Active Directory, okay? <laughs> that's today and that's all on-premise. Imagine what's <laughs> happening with Azure and some of the authentication stuff there. So there's actually an Active Directory connector within ClearOS to connect to other Active Directory connectors. So I, that's one of the paid apps. It's in the marketplace, but that's a really good question. Cool. All right, tell us the next question. More, okay. Um, this question came up a lot. Just, um, just want to give you guys a little bit of a breather. Um, but a bunch of spice heads were asking about a demo. This one's from Booney 120 HB. Where can I get access to a demo of Clear OS? Uh, so there's a couple different ways. One, you can Google Clear OS demo, and it'll pop up four or five demos that are online. Username is get pass or username is get password is clear, and you can run in. The real demos they rebuild every night, but you can see it. The marketplace you cannot buy stuff because we locked that down, or just download it on clearos.com. Pull it down, put it on x86 based system, and run it. Uh, even use the paid version, um, and it's free for 30 days. If you don't like it, it'll default to community, and you don't ever have to pay anything. And I promise you, you run community, you won't ever have uh, that disappear on you. So you can count on it. Do you have any virtual images ready to go? People yes and no. Okay. The best, if you want virtual images, use ClearVM. Okay. Yep. All right. Next question, Charles. Okay. This one is from Mike Vanden Boom. Um, Mike wants to know: Is there an SDK for developing for ClearOS? Hmm. That goes right back to what we talked about earlier. You're going to want to find the white paper for ISVs, and you're going to want to fill out an ISV agreement online. Both of them are automated processes and simple to go through. What's the uh, language that you guys use? Um, it doesn't matter. Okay. I mean, it's. It's, it's got, uh, it's really going to depend on what kind of language the apps are built in. Okay. That's going to hook into it. So there's no, so it's not it's, like it's iOS where you have to go on a specific language to develop for ClearOS or anything like that. No, so. we've got, we've got lots of different apps that do different things. Again, some, some open and some closed. What we're based on is open standards. Gotcha. And that's really the secret element to all of this. It's open standards that connect open source and closed source together. Cool. Chelsea, next question. Alrighty, we have another question from Mike Vandenboom. Um, we already talked about how uh, the command line interface, interface was still an option, but Mike wants to know, is the web interface going to be HTML5? Hmm. Mm, good question, you gotta stay tuned for that. <laughs> look, look for ClearOS 8 to be able to get that answer, but the net net is, uh, we, do, we do plan on some intelligent stuff, and it's leveraging elements of HTML5, but I don't have an answer for you today. All right, Chelsea. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about the HPE and ClearOS partnership here. Uh, Bill Phillips 3 has two questions. First, he wants to know what kind slash tiers of support will HPE offer for ClearOS on HPE hardware? And um, can support be added for ClearOS on HPE hardware that didn't ship with it? So you're always going to get the same type of warranty you're going to get with HPE hardware, but ClearOS, is it supported, will be supported through ClearCenter. So you'll be connected up with a, a Clear Center support rep if you have a paid version. Uh, there's actually four different versions of the paid subscriptions, two that have support and two that don't have support. So if you get one that doesn't have support, you can actually pay a fee to be able to get access to it. Our goal is to create uh, an environment that really service providers like JJ, they literally can actually get set up. They duplicate it one time and then they don't have to go back for support. But if you need it, it is there. Uh, you would actually want to open up what's called a clear care ticket, and that's how you get it. So there's lots of folks around the world that are looking forward to serving you. Mm -hmm. Chab, anything to add to that? That's it. So uh, uh, again, uh, Reliant plus ClearOS. If uh, if customers have any kind of issue, uh, HP is responsible for the hardware, mm -hmm. and ClearCenter takes care of the operating system. Mm -hmm. And it's it's uh, basically our standard support policies and ClearCenter's standard support policy. Chelsea, let's get another one. Are you sure? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, we do have a ton of questions, so I'll keep them coming. A typical IT guy wants to know, in terms of security, what are the advantages of ClearOS versus more common Linux distros? Hmm. So ClearOS is one of those common Linux distros. It's actually built off of CentOS or Red Hat, which the majority of the world uses. So when you look at, uh, there's actually probably one of the biggest security threats that actually hit over the last 21 days or so in the last five years. So it's, mm -hmm. it's and you'll find ClearOS is pretty dang quick as far as responsiveness. So think about, you know, you've got Fedora, then you've got Red Hat, then you've got CentOS, then you've got ClearOS, and then you've got the community users of ClearOS. So you're gonna have a tested environment once it actually hits your paid 
across business environments. All right, let's get another one, Chelsea. Okay, we have another one from bweber93. Um, does ClearOS have apps or a download manager, or does it use the typical Linux package system, and how compatible is it with other Linux distro packages? Good question. So the first part of it, ClearOS has a marketplace called the ClearOS Marketplace, and you can actually pull down apps that are already built in, integrated into it, or you can use third-party RPMs to be able to install on your own if you want to. Those are typically not supported, but you can do it. Um, so the simple answer is use the marketplace. If there's something not in the marketplace that you want to see in there, go to the ClearOS community, let us know, and if, if your page basically gets viewed, it hits the statistics for us, and we start putting some energy behind getting these apps in there. So let us know. All right. Let's get another question, Chelsea. All righty. Uh, let's see. Brown Coats SGT, what's up, Brown Coats? Um, Brown wants to know how will Clear OS handle non-standard apps that will only run on Windows? That's a great question. The last app that we just deployed is actually Microsoft SQL, native, uh, yes. native, native <laughs> on Clear OS. Um, so the the simple answer is you'll probably start seeing a continuation of Microsoft or others taking closed apps and, and making them available on Linux, which would then in turn get onto ClearOS. Um, there's other elements of it as well. Virtualization, containerization, you can get different apps set up that way. Those are probably the recommended ways to do it. You know, set up your line of business app on Windows, on a virtual machine, on the same hardware with ClearOS maybe doing your networking gateway and that your, that's your line of business app. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, Keen, are we going to add anything? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chelsea, let's keep going. All right. Seldom wants to know, can Clear OS be used as a hypervisor? Good question. Mm -hmm. The simple answer is no, not today, but there will be an element of it in the Clear OS marketplace. But the right answer, or the right direction, is instead of going to clearos.com, go to clearvm.com, and that is actually a hypervisor that is web managed. So you can see all your hardware, regardless of the location, from a web-based interface, and then all the virtual machines that sit underneath it from that same web-based interface, and then you can move them around. So for those that are familiar with hypervisors, again, it's running on clear, uh, KVM, and so all your same feature functions to be able to spin up VMs, to be able to move them, snapshot them. You can even back them up with this system, but it's a very unique way. If you want to learn about how it works, go read the patent, but it's a very unique way of managing systems in any part of the world. So like JJ's got different engineers, or maybe even the folks asking questions, you've got different engineers that do different things, and they're usually not on premise with that customer, but you want to be able to support and manage multiple clients from one system that's secure. So you're not the target. If, if JJ's compromised, his customers are also compromised. We don't want that type of architecture. It's just, it's, it's kind of like the mentality of allowing everyone online to see everything online and vice versa. It just, the security principles behind it don't jive. So it's a, it's a different paradigm, but I um, hope that answers that question. Okay. Let's get another one, Chelsea. All right. B. Weber is coming in strong. I think this might be the third question that I'm asking from him. <laughs> he really wants that, that swag pack. Yeah. <laughs> he won a couple of weeks ago. I think he got the grand prize, um, if I recall correctly. I could be wrong. Um, uh, it's been a while. Uh, but B. Weber uh, coming in strong, like I said, another great one. How compatible is it with backup and maintenance software such as Veeam or Spiceworks inventory? That's a great question. question. Really good question. So ClearOS in and of itself doesn't do things such as inventory or remote data back or RMM type solutions. Uh, it does have a backup system that's built into it so you can back up everything on premise to off premise. It is totally secured. We actually never get the keys and you can back it up inside or outside of the United States based upon compliance needs. Or you can actually go and download an app called Bacula and basically back up PCs to that system. Or you can set it up, and we don't have an automated way to do this today, but you can set it up so they actually back up to your environments. There is some simple commands. Uh, there's some how-tos. But the simple reason, or at least the response around remote data backup is covered with those apps in the ClearOS marketplace. The other side of it is with the inventory and, and those types of remote monitoring systems, ClearOS integrates with those systems. So we don't do those types of things like what Spiceworks does or Kaseya or Autotask or ConnectWise, but it integrates into those just like what you would see with a, a Red Hat or even a Microsoft deployment where you want to see is it up, is it available, is it filling up, is it spiking, 
and all those types of things. Shop, anything to report as far as like some of the existing HPE backup technologies like store ones specific to clear OS or anything like that? So uh, right now, uh, it's a bit, not really, right now. Let's <laughs> put you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right now I think it, uh, integration of the products is our primary goal. Mm -hmm. Of course, as we move forward and, you know, uh, can't, uh, you don't want to talk about future, mm -hmm. or what we're going to do in the future, but this sets the base. Mm -hmm. So, okay, cool. short answer. <laughs> Chelsea, next question, please. No questions. Okay, this next one is from Michael seven one four zero hertz. Hey, Mike, Michael. What's up, buddy? <laughs> uh, Michael wants to know: Is Clear OS geared toward making an appliance type server? It sure is. As a matter of fact, uh, HPE just launched the first generation or the tenth generation of the microserver, and that particular server. Um, talk about appliance. It basically gives you hardware, software, services all integrated for the server network and gateway layer for less than 150 bucks one time. And that's, I mean, that's disruptive. But if you want to build your own appliance, you know, grab your x86 based system, deploy it on it. And like JJ talked about earlier, there are parts of the partner program where you can actually brand it as yourself. Mm. You need to have some value add that you're adding to it. Uh, or you can even, if you're a partner and you want to deploy it in a certain part of a region of the world, you can also get partners that have a particular region or a particular brand. So it gives you guys competitive advantages to build your business. But check out the microserver Gen 10 mm -hmm. uh, with ClearOS. It is an appliance. Mm -hmm. And where can they get it from? Number of locations. Uh, check out our hp.com. hp.com will point you towards uh, the right partners where uh, they're currently available. Mm -hmm. Okay, and any plans to make like a JJ box? Or anything for customers? Actually, yeah, that's one of the questions <laughs> that I brought up to, to Mike. Um, we, being as an MSP, a lot of people have decided to start providing their own solutions, whether it be backup, whether it be security or anything like that. Um, I, 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 see, I feel that the ClearOS product will give me and my company an opportunity to white label and brand our own products using the ClearOS operating system to be able to deploy security appliances, mm. uh, VM structures, backup <laughs> solutions, and different hybrid cloud local infrastructure solutions to be able to increase our portfolio of our company. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, yes, I think it's a very viable product. Very cool. All right, Chelsea, we've got time for a few more. Let's keep okay, it going. Good, I definitely have a few more. Yes. Um, these are our two related questions. Jason wants to know, how come the Gen 10 microservers drop the ILO ports? And Bill Phillips 3, uh, He's, he references Chad is talking about no ILO or IPMI in the microserver. Can it be added back? So, so why was the, it dropped and can it be added back? Yeah. So with the microserver, you've got two groups with very strong opinions. <laughs> <laughs> two customer bases with very strong opinions. There's a customer base that says, hey, I'm going to use it in my little office and I really don't need ILO. And there's a group that says, I need it. So we've uh, had to balance the requirements between uh, those two uh, st very strong voices. And for the microserver Gen 10, uh, the other strong voice won. And if it's, uh, I can take this feedback back to the product teams if it's a really big concern. Huge, huge concern. <laughs> <laughs> right. One thing that's important to note though, if you're using clear VM underneath it, it does about 80% of what you can typically do with ILO. It doesn't do the reboot, or the, it, it'll do reboot, but it doesn't do the start from scratch, so the wake on LAN, you know, boot it up cold. But you can literally, you can watch the system come up, you can see it even before the operating system pops, um, and you can see, is it up, is it available, what disks are in it, you can even format disks remotely. Mm -hmm. um, and you can now see what virtual machines are on it, and then you can deploy more Vorum virtual machines and you can back those up and you can move them around. So it can even do more than what you're typically used to. So hopefully you find it um, from a price and value standpoint that there's some good value there. But all in all, we continue to welcome feedback. If this is a real sticking point, continue yeah. to let us know. And, and the other reason we made that decision is, 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 uh, is, is from a portfolio standpoint, we said, you know, the ML30, if you look at it, is targeted at, this, at a similar type uh, workload and a similar type use case. So if ILO is something of a must have, then we do have the ML30 that uh, gives you very, very similar features. 
and it solves the and it gives you ILO as well. Mm -hmm. you, so you, to, you can get ILO on a PCIe card too, right? So you no. can actually no. no. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike, just to be clear, so are you saying that you can run you can have you can run clear VM on a microserver? Really? Okay. <laughs> so even for like small fifteen person customers or smaller, like they, you can still get that virtualization environment for under oh, it's, 400. It's yeah. very small. It fits mm -hmm. on a small thumb drive. That's right. Very yeah. cool. All That's right. Uh, Chelsea, got kind of time for a couple more. Let's keep Good. it going. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, awesomeness incoming wants to know is clear. <laughs> you like that one? That was a good one. Um, is Clear OS meant to be a supplement to a Windows environment, or could it be used to create a Clear OS environment? So it can replace a Windows environment, or it can be a supplement, or in the industry you'd call it a secondary domain controller, um, or it can actually be connected into an Active Directory connection or an environment. So if you've got an Active Directory environment already set up. You can literally use the Active Directory connector in the ClearOS marketplace and basically have that ClearOS instance be subordinate to the primary domain controller of Windows. So it plays nicely with both. Cool. Chelsea, I think we have time for two more. Two more? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so earlier, guys, you mentioned that you don't need a VPN to access ClearOS from a web browser, and that got Lee Young and Nerdy Dad, hey, Nerdy, uh, to get talking. Um, so basically, Nerdy Dad wants to know, do you support secure access through HTTPS, or should we be routing through another device to run the web browser instance? Are we able to load our own SSL certificates for the HTTPS connections if that method is available? All right, so there's like four questions. <laughs> I know, I said, <laughs> but I said two, so she lumped four into the Sorry, same one. So. It, was, <laughs> no, no, it was like it's, a summary of it's a all good. They're really, They're really good. So first off, yes, you can do SSH. Uh, yes, you can add your own SSL certs. It actually creates its own SSL certs inside of the system. There's an app for that. Um, your paradigm around how you access it securely through a web-based interface is not exactly correct. You can open it up. If you want to, you can port forward on port 81 to be able to see it. But the net reality is, is um, I think what you, the real value is using what we call ClearVM to be able to access these machines from a physical and virtual standpoint from any location. We don't recommend sticking ser servers online um, without a, a new, and I, I won't go through the details here, unique way to be able to hit a URL and be able to see environments securely. But we do think that the world of VPNs and centralized management is of the dodo. It's of the past. It's not going to be the future. And we really need to think about, look, look at what's going on with ransomware or even managed service providers. They will be targets. And if they get you, they got all your customers. You got everybody. Right? So the net net is that architecture is flawed as mankind. We shouldn't be doing it that way. And we're working hard to be able to come up with secure ways and not working. We've already done it, but it's not public yet. So just pay attention to that. But uh, hopefully we answered your, your three or four questions there. Cool. Chelsea, one more question, please. Are you sure you want yes. one more? I'm okay. trying to cram like seven or eight of them. Okay. Yeah. Um, I will keep this one simple. It is one from Spicehead Mindwork. Can I use community, parentheses, free or home essential edition legal for my home office? So is that legal to do, I guess is yep. the question? First off, you're in the open source world. Open source is free. <laughs> you can use it all you want. Uh, the value, there, there's basically a community version, a home version, and a business version. The community version are for folks that really want, they don't want to run it in a production environment or they want to run it in their home and they don't want to pay anything. Do it, feel free. Don't feel like you're doing anything wrong. If you want to run it in a home and you want to be able to protect maybe <clears throat> not just your physical assets, but your, your virtual connections, or maybe kids on, on using content filtering, or maybe using Plex Media Server, or different things in your home, and you want some of the paid features, um, you can buy the home version, or we see a lot of folks that use the community version. Now the key is, the community version is really there for testing. So you're going to get patches that may not be 100%. And we use it as a, a, a viability of testing. So. Make sure that you're not running it in production environments, but f please feel free to use it, and uh, don't feel like you're taking something for nothing, but that's a great question. Okay, right, cool, guys. Great questions, everyone. That was really impressive set. Congrats to you guys for fielding them all. Uh, it is running out of time, so I wanted to make sure that you guys each had an opportunity to share any final thoughts, wrap everything up for us. Uh, Joaquin, can you, you know, uh, for folks that are watching today, um, thinking about 
Clear OS, thinking about Clear OS and HPE, what, what advice do you have for them? My, my suggestion is keep an open mind. Uh, this is a very viable product. It has the opportunity to, as MSPs, allow you to outsource services from security to backup to cloud services, uh, be able to monetize on that product, and be able to provide support and customer service for all your clients. Uh, and the way the future is going, everything's being cloud-based. I think ClearOS is going to be the winner in this situation. Awesome. Uh, Shab, any final thoughts or, or takeaways that you'd like the audience to walk away with today? Absolutely. So uh, the, H, the ProLiant and ClearOS integration is designed for fast deployment and basically to make your jobs easier. And so I would encourage you to go to www.hpe.com Check out our new uh, ProLiant, check out our ProLiant Gen 9 systems which, which support Clear Center, Clear OS. And also, if you're going to be attending Spice World, then you'll see our new Gen 10 servers, which will come with Clear OS and will be the industry's most secure servers. And they'll get to say it live in person, give it a spin. Yes. Come to Spice World. So yeah. Everyone come to Spice World. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Mike, uh, final thoughts from you. What would you like everyone to remember as they go? So through? final thoughts are, if you've been in the IT industry for a period of time, you've kind of watched the whole MSP, managed service provider, sector start, right? And typically, like JJ, you deploy on hardware, software, and services on-premise for predictable monthly fee. And now you've got, you know, off-premise types apps and services that effectively like Office 365 or Google Apps or Dropbox or other systems, and you're trying to figure out how to combine those and still keep control of your customer and not just give them away. Well, if you use ClearOS on-premise, it gives you the hybrid approach to be able to do all of that with one system, with one integration. So, for instance, you know, there's a Google Apps connector. There's another app for it, right? But we believe that there's a new type of service provider that's evolving, a hybrid service provider and using different unique tools in what's been deployed over the last decade or two. And if you're interested in learning more about it, go to clearcenter.com, click on the partner side of it, sign up to be a partner, we'll mentor you through the process, we'll teach you how to make money with it, how to scale your business, and ultimately how to, in, in, our, in our world and generation, it's hard to go and retire, right? It's even hard to go and, I don't, I don't like boating, but some folks <laughs> wanna actually go and buy a boat or have, have free money, but the reality is, is we're gonna try and teach you how to retire and how to stay in one line of business and retire in it. Because there's a lot of folks that have been in this for 20 plus years and they're scratching their head. It's like, how do I keep doing this and take a break? Mm -hmm. And so let, let us kind of help you, even if you're of the older mindset, because those are the ones we're actually really targeting, is you can do this with a usable interface and you can do this with the right level of coaching based upon the right technology that doesn't have vendor lock-in or dollars and cents as its primary driver, so to speak. So we welcome the opportunity to work with you. We're grateful for Spiceworks, and we're grateful to be here in Austin with all the help. So. <laughs> Thank you for having us. <laughs> all right, guys, it is time that everyone's been waiting for. It's time to announce the winners of our prizes. So let's throw it back over to Chelsea one last time. Chelsea? Well, yes, that's right. It is the time. Um, <laughs> some of you, but before I do get into prizes, some of you in chat did notice uh, a new addition to the team. Hello, <laughs> white and orange clock. Um, speaking of retire, it is time, sadly, to uh, say goodbye to good old Clocky McClockface. Clocky McClockface <laughs> over here. Uh, he is retiring. I think we have a gold watch in the works for him. I really feel like we should have had like a video montage of all the great moments with Clocky McClockface. Um, <laughs> we'll think up something fun here, uh, maybe a giveaway to a special um, on the air viewer <laughs> someday in the future. But for the time being, um, Let's just say goodbye to Clocky McClock Base. We loved you, Clocky. You served us well. Welcome to the Sorry team. We we'll see how you do. Well, he, you know, he was on the road with us a lot. Yes. Um, and I don't know why I think he's a he, but it just feels right. Uh, so prizes, you, you guys, I guess you want to know who won, right? We do. All right, let me pull up my handy dandy prize sheet. Um, the prizes are always selected at random. So our swag pack, uh, courtesy of HPE, uh, is this OGO backpack complete with zippers, um, tons of slots, and then of course we have the uh, thermos here, HPE branded thermos, and really chic notebook complete with pen. This is going out to three lucky spice heads today, and those names are Verb8 Tim, Booney120HB, and Mike Vandenboom. Congratulations. We're getting hooked up.
This is really nice stuff. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> um, great pack. And then we have our grand prize, which is awesome. Um, it is an Oculus Rift, and that is going out to one ver very lucky attendee of today's show, and that's going to Zelda X4 LDOM, just in case I, I'm pronouncing it wrong every time. Uh, so congratulations to our winners. If I did announce you as one of our winners today, please be sure to email us your mailing address at ontheair at spiceworks.com. Um, for those of you that didn't hear the winners or didn't hear where to send in your mailing address, I will put that in chat momentarily. Um, and that's all that I really have. Thank you as always for hanging out with me and Lee and chat. Uh, the questions today were amazing. The conversation was Definitely. great. Um, I'm gonna give it back over to Justin now. All right, thanks everyone. Congratulations to all of our big winners. And yeah, thank you again for, for hanging out with us in chat and asking all those great questions. Mm -hmm. Thanks as well to uh, all of our guests today, Joaquin, Chab, and Mike. Uh, and thanks to our sponsor, HPE. Had a great time hanging out with you guys. I'd definitely love to hang out with you guys again sometime soon. Hopefully we get a chance to do yeah, this. Yeah, great time as well. Awesome. Um, hope to see you guys at Spice World. Uh, for the, uh, make sure to come back next. We'll be back here next week. Uh, we've got another show we're going to be talking all about uh, end user devices and what actually goes into making the Elite line an Elite. Um, we've got a podcast about that. We've interviewed Jeremy RSPS from the community. That podcast should be in your feed now, so make sure to check that out. Uh, subscribe on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Google, and SoundCloud. Um, and uh, for more information about that episode and everything else on the air, you can click on or you go to community.spiceworks.com slash on the air, not OTAs, community.spiceworks.com slash on the air. Uh, but until next time, guys, stay safe, keep it spicy, hug your open source operating system servers, and we'll see you guys back here next time. It's all good.